Can you tell us a little bit more about Hamas and uh, what their belief systems might be? To fight uh, basically empire. And they need to bring people together. And that ideology is stuck. They are fighting with uh, anything and anyone that does not fit their agenda. If you give them a common enemy, mm. that's even better. Shalom, friends. I'm Mitch Glazer, president of Chosen People Ministries, here with some good friends and esteemed guests to talk about a very crucial subject. We're going to try and address the topic of what is Arab anti-Semitism and how did it lead to the attacks on October 7th in Israel, or did it? As you know by now, on October 7th, Hamas stormed into Israel, attacking, killing, and kidnapping many innocent civilians. Today, we still have over 130 hostages in Gaza from the 200 that were kidnapped on October 7th. So today, we're here to talk about anti-Semitism in the Muslim world and how this may have affected the motivation for Hamas and their attacks on Israel on October 7th. Joining us today are our guests, Dr. Matthew Friedman and Dr. Alphonse Javid. Dr. Matthew Friedman is an adjunct professor at Asbury Theological Seminary with an expertise in intercultural studies, world religions, missiology, and the social sciences. He's been a missionary to the Muslims in India and has taught the subject of Islam at various theological seminaries, including Asbury and Kingswood University in New Brunswick, Canada, as well as other schools. Matt is a Jewish believer in Jesus who grew up in a Jewish community in suburban New Jersey. Also, Dr. Alphonse Javid is currently senior pastor at First Baptist Church of Metuchen, New Jersey, and the founder of Heart for Muslims Conference in Manhattan, as well as the author of three books on the subject of urban ministry and Muslim outreach. Matt and Alphonse, may I call you that? Sure. Or doctor, doctor? <laughs> Reminds me of a Marx Brothers skit, right? It all cancels out. <laughs> so Matt and Alphonse, thank you so much for being here. And we have uh, some very serious matters to address today. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to have a, a good discussion and, and, and learn a lot more about Arab anti-Semitism, which I think is a, a hidden topic these days. You, don't, you just don't hear a lot about uh, Muslim anti-Semitism. After all, something must have driven uh, those who are part of Hamas. And of course, even Hamas itself is not monolithic, you know, different people with different opinions, but common values. And so what I'm going to ask on the, in this first question uh, should get us started. And we need to know a little bit more about Hamas, actually. And we, and we need to know a little bit more about their worldview. We know, need to know about their religious views. And we were trying to understand what would drive a group of people to slaughter innocent neighbors. And, you know, it's a complicated issue. But we'd like to focus a little bit on what's behind the scenes, what's underneath, what drove them to do it. So can you tell us a little bit more about Hamas and uh, what their belief systems might be, uh, maybe where they are unique compared to others who are Muslims, and so that we can better understand what happened on October 7th. Who would like to begin? Um, I, can, I can just kind of pipe up with a couple of things. Um, one, one of the things for us to understand is, is, is Hamas represents a particular Islamist, kind of Islamic fundamentalist, um, take, but not even all Islamic fundamentalism is violent. Um, there's 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 a party, a political party in Israel that's got that would call itself Islamist on some level, but they, they're not they're not advocating violence and murder and that sort of thing. Hamas, um, the roots of modern Islamism go back to basically the the Muslim Brotherhood um, in Egypt, founded by Hassan al Banna. And uh, but it, their key ideologue was a guy named Sayyid Qutb, um, and uh, Qutb. Of course, it's their even their stuff was resting on earlier foundations. But it was this idea that 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 our situation that is in in, in Egypt, but in the broader Muslim or, or at least Arab world, is the situation in which we're strut in which we don't have the kind of footing that we ought to ha have is because we have not been faithful to Islam, not been faithful 
to God and and government ought to be run along Islamic lines. So so Qutb uh, wrote a very influential commentary on the Quran out of which was excerpted, partly out of which was excerpted, a, a book that was called Milestones on the Path that basically was a blueprint of how to create an Islamic government. So this became kind of the blueprint for other similar organizations, including Hamas, which was which is which regards itself as a Muslim Brotherhood offshoot at root, though they've gone in in some particularly obscurantist directions. Would you like to add to that? Sure. Um, I think I will take even uh, farther back to Ibn Tamiyah. Yes. Um, he would be the to me, that would be the founder of the modern jihad. And if you look at that, it was uh, Islam split in two halves. One half was the dominating force then uh, when uh, Mughals were moving in India and you had the uh, um, Ottoman Empire was in early stages and uh, they were losing grip on Islamic values, Sharia, real Islam that Tamiya thought was uh, no longer accepted by those who came from the outside, were not Arabs, but came from the outside and deceived the Muslim community in believing in a type of Islam which was not originated in Arab by Muhammad. So you have that resistance force way back, way back, way before yes. uh, Albana or anybody else. So he creates this infrastructure for um, for future Muslims and uh, future uh, Islamists that you can fight your own people. So that was the first time you see a Muslim scholar uh, giving a fatwa or uh, Islamic uh, verdict that Muslims can stand, stand against Muslims and they can fight because he was uh, working for the, for the uh, little man wanted to raise those uh, villagers and uh, town people to stand up to these foreign powers that are uh, becoming becoming the representation of Islam so you you are you are looking far far uh, back from even brotherhood and brotherhood mm -hmm. in their constitution if you look at it they talk about tamia yes, they, they took do. the That's right. language they took the uh, al qaeda did that uh, taliban did that um, most of modern uh, jihadists did that, and here's why they did that. By the time you see colonism, um, Britain, Britons and uh, uh, French, uh, they are facing some resistance. Muslims found that they need to uh, bring Muslim community together to fight back. And you're looking at, at that time, you're looking at uh, Egypt. Egypt is uh, trying to uh, rediscover their uh, for former glory or mm. rediscover their identity as Islam uh, or Islamic land. Uh, then you're looking at uh, most of the um, occupied Islamic territory by, by Britons. And then over there in, his, in, in uh, India, which is current day, you're looking at uh, uh, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, India, and some other uh, small uh, land. Uh, you see that over there, they are fighting the same cause. So they needed a narrative um, that can unite Muslim communities. So there you have Ummah coming together with a pure political motive uh, to fight uh, uh, basically empire. And they need to bring people together. And that ideology stuck even today. So today they are not fighting against... Uh, they may, be, they may not be fighting against uh, um, uh, Britons or uh, Mughals or uh, Ottoman Empire, but they are fighting with uh, anything and anyone that does not fit their agenda. Therefore, they will fight with uh, uh, even uh, Saudi government, which is a Muslim government, Sharia government. They will fight with uh, Iran, which is a Muslim government, different type of Islam. They will yeah. fight with anybody. And then... If you give them a common enemy, mm. that's even better. Yes. So you're looking at Hamas not a as a just a um, group that just was born because there was destitution and there's uh, people are hungry for something. You're looking at a well organized ideology behind that that created this beautiful Islamic uh, resistance uh, for their rights. Then and uh, successfully, they were able to 
create their identity. So it's proven method. And then when you see brotherhood branching out into Europe and other places, they took with them their philosophy. Right. So therefore, you see people going back to those countries. Uh, Al-Qaeda, you talk about 9-11. Uh, the guy blamed the United States for what they what they for their actions. Oh, they are the one I lived there. We were we worked there. How did they get here? All of this goes back to they came here evangelizing uh, with that narrative, and then as we move forward, eventually brotherhood was already in Palestine. They wanted they wanted um, to sit on the same table with uh, Fatah Al Fatah and uh, other. PLO, other people, whoever was around, they wanted the same political identity. But it just, because they're more aggressive, because they got more support, because they have ideologically, they are different from the other two, three groups, they rose to power with weapon and strength. And therefore, they were able to also gain that strength from other countries where jihad uh, needs some face. They need someone to lead. So here you have a need and, a, and somebody who can lead. So therefore you got the support. And there you have the story of Hamas. Easily you can manipulate few people who are already stressed, they feel the pressure, and they want to show that we need our identity back. If, if Pakistan get the land, if uh, Egypt can get their land back, all the countries can get their land back, we're going to get our land back too. Yeah. Yeah, it's at the same time. I, I, let me let me just mention as well because I, I think it's important that you mention some of the deeper roots of Islamist philosophy in Tamiya and all. At the same time, there's there's in the 20th century. Bef at the time, you have the emergence of of Hassan al Banna and and uh, the Ikhwan, the 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 Muslim brothers. They're actually kind of a minority group among sure. among those seeking identity and pu pushing back against colonialism. The majority is nationalist, mm -hmm. like you see in Egypt with uh, with Gamal Abdel Nasser, and um, and and very and especially um, in the mid to later twentieth century, very strongly leftist, which is interesting because a lot of the 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 fighting against hatred against murder against Jews and Israelis in, say, in the 60s and the 70s was not primarily Islamic. It was primarily leftist, actually. It was, it was influenced by the Soviet model, if anything. And, um, and in fact, um, Sayyid Qutb in Egypt, Sayyid Qutb was not executed by, he was not executed by, by, the Israelis. He was not executed by the West. He was he was executed by by Nasser's government right. um, in '66 um, because he was threatening and his group was threatening the Egyptian regime. In fact, it was the Muslim Brothers that assassinated Sadat um, before his for a variety of reasons, but primarily because he had he had led the rapprochement with Israel, but. I think part of what also led eventually to a shift away from the leftist model as well was, was uh, the humiliation of 1967, um, where, where they were preparing for a massive war against Israel. The at least initial victories of 73, even though ultimately they lost then as well, but the initial victories of the 73 Yom Kippur War um, were for them a certain degree of vindication. It was, it was a matter of, of, and this combines with the, this combines with the the Islamic part and and the cultural part. Kind of both touch on the issue of shame and honor, and so so. Sadat was able when he was looking at trying to make peace with Israel. He had to go. He went back to his own Congress and say, oh, you people of October, basically to remind them of, of at least we'd done something in 73, and it had not been like a, the situation in, in 67. So it's, it's, it's more complicated, like Hamas 
articulates itself as being, because it's part of the Muslim Brotherhood, their charter quotes Quran and Hadith specifically with regard to the eradication of the Jews. I mean, it's bad. Um, but it's but part of that is also combined with other elements that 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 led to things like like October seven. So this is great. Let me uh, very informative and and you're dealing with a lot of what I was hoping you would deal with in terms of understanding what's underneath and and what drives people and. That people are driven by different factors, and certainly Hamas is shaped by a whole different. You know, th everything's contextual. You know, even though it, you can look, you can say there's a pan-Islamic uh, world, but actually, when you when you focus on particular countries and contexts, it changes quite a bit. So, uh, just by way of some maybe some basics that you can help our folks with. Uh, What's the difference between uh, Shia and Sunni? Hmm. You want to take that? You're in Iran, man. Sure. I should let you so, take that one. So <laughs> uh, basically, it, let me give you a very express um, Islam 101. Uh -huh. Muhammad, is, uh, he, he became a prophet at the age of 40. And uh, he was in Mecca. His people didn't like him. For 10 years, he preached. Uh, very faithfully, a message of love, and uh, almost that you look at uh, that part, Maki Suras, you will mm. see uh, the expression of God's love and care, and to a point that he is persecuted. His followers, very few, are persecuted, and uh, he continued to uh, lead people toward uh, patience, tolerance, and those kind of things, very much like Bible. Was was he playing off Christianity, Judaism? It's definitely anim animism. What was it's, it's uh, mostly what was Jewish. You can actually put uh, Jewish scriptures and mm. Christian scriptures on one side, and Maki Surahs on the other side. References you can see those references right there. No difference. Even to a point that they are when they're worshiping God, they're facing Jerusalem. That's they right. uh, they are doing uh, initially. Yeah, initially, yeah. <laughs> and they are. Uh, uh, rather than Ramadan, they are observing uh, Yom Kippur. So those kind of things are things are there. It all everything it. changes when he comes to Medina. That's okay. Right. In Medina, you start a next set of his life, second part of his life, where he becomes a ruler, where he becomes a warrior, where he becomes the prophet who has a sword and he can invade. And then when he goes back with an army, a lot, lot of things happen between when he goes back to Mecca. Now he's a warrior that you don't want to face because he has defeated tribes after tribes and he has weapons and people behind him. Yep. And he, without any resistance, he takes over Mecca and now his empire spreads. Islam spreads, in other words, his rule spreads. But here's the important part. With political ruler, you're always going to have a polit political allies, people who are going to become your relatives and uh, you're going to have that kind of stuff. But your family will also suffer. So his own family, that's the unit, his wife, um, uh, his daughter, uh, he didn't, didn't have any son, so his daughter has two sons, and uh, his uh, cousin or became his brother-in-law, He, they, Ali, so Ali and his daughter married and had two children. They, in that political climate, they were not given, when Muhammad passed away, they were not given, people wanted him to have successorship, uh, successorship but he, they were not allowed. It was uh, one of the popular guy uh, who was brought in. After him, another one. After him, another one. It was the fourth in line. Finally, his, Muhammad's household, got a place in leadership. So now they are in leadership, but then his people were killed by the political campaign. So you have one side called Sunni. Those are the those who follow the Sunnah disciples of Muhammad. The other is Shiite. These are the people who come from the family. They follow the bloodline. And uh, therefore, from day one, you have this split. Always you're going to have minority is very small uh, number of them is Shiite. That's you have Iran, Syria, Yemen conflict right now because of that. 
You have a very large uh, number in uh, in uh, UAE, that area. And then you have majority Islam is Sunni. So that's your two different uh, aspects of Islam. One is looking forward to the Mahdi who will come back. The other one... And which one is that? Shiite. That's Shiite. Shiites. Shiite. Shiite. Yeah. That's where Iran and that's is. that's Iran. Right. That's why and Iran Iraq, is aggressive. Actually too. And Iraq has yeah. because mostly they are uh, Sunni. Sunni is... Ma- Iraqi majority is Sunni. Oh, sorry. Um, They're Shiite. Shiite. Shiite majority, Shiite. even Iraq is Shiite, is the government that was previously, it was Sunni. And we see that in Bahrain, the same thing. That's right. The ruling um, party or, or, the, or the prince or the um, monarchs, they are Sunni, but the people are Shiite. So you have this whole thing around the world, and it continues to be a conflict. Pakistan is Sunni. Iran is Shiite. Yeah. So you have conflict right That's there right. too. Right now. So right now. That's right. So you have these things ongoing, but it goes back to that simple question who is going to be the successor of Muhammad? Right. Um, and that's, it's, again, you can tell it's a political. I, let, let me just interject sure. something else too. Cause, because, um, especially in the current atmosphere, um, Iran is, is essentially building an empire. Um, of client states, um, so they 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 overshadow Iraq very strongly right sure. now. They overshadow the Syrian government, which is ma- Syria's majority Sunni, but their their uh, rulers are actually f- part of a br- kind of a splinter group, a splinter group off of Shia Islam that d- you could debate whether it's even really Muslim, and. Uh, but they kind of identify as Muslim for the sake of the alliance. And then the Shia, large Shia minority in Lebanon and, and guided partly by Hezbollah now. And then in, in Yemen, northern Yemen, what's interesting is the Houthis, they're not mainstream Shia at all. They're actually what are called Za'idi. They, they broke away from the mainstream Shia centuries ago over who the successor of like Imam number five was going to be among the Shia. But but they've gotten absorbed back into this Iranian Shia kind of circle because um, maybe in a similar manner to which the Soviets um, built a, a circle of satellite states post-World War II, I see Iran s- attempting to do something similar. And Hamas, um, even though they're... Sunni. So Hamas is Sunni. Hamas is Sunni. Palestinian Islamic Jihad, they're more directly controlled by Iran, but I think majority of them, there aren't that many Shia Muslims in among the Palestinians, actually. So then uh, the Iran, mm-hmm. okay, is Shia. Mm-hmm. And the, Palis- uh, the people in Gaza... Uh-huh. Majority are, Sunni. Majority, majority are very strongly Sunni. Sunni. Strongly Sunni. Yeah. And Hezbollah in southern Lebanon is Shiite. Is Shiite. So there would be a natural, mm-hmm. at least a little bit more natural relationship with oh, yeah. Iran, right? right. Sure. So when it comes to bloodline or descendantship of Muhammad, it's not that they are fighting over descent today. Everybody respects uh, Ali. Everybody mm-hmm. uh, Sunnis revere Ali. Fatima and all uh, the both boys, their problem is no longer um, who is uh, because those are old days; right. those are gone. The problem is now when when Muhammad, when Sunnis uh, talk about Muhammad, they talk about what's called uh, Khatman Nabi. That means there is yes. no prophet after him. It's like a done deal. But when when therefore their creed is La ilaha illallah Muhammad the Rasulullah done. But Shiite add to it so it's almost uh, you have a uh, christian creed uh, let's say god the father god the son god the holy spirit and then we say and uh, um some other guy so that's their <laughs> that's their problem it's sunnis today is, the issue is they are adding uh, more blessing they are br- elevating the status of ali, of ali and the first family Hassan and Hussein. Right, Hassan and Hussein, they're elevated. So th- those old things are now, it's more theological, but when it comes to the um, respect 
of Shiites, I think people still, Sunnis, acknowledge that they are the descendants of Muhammad. Therefore, they're weird. That's at least what I think uh, ideologically. It, it's clear that, yes, fights happen, and Sunnis have condemned. Later on, they did condemn that brutal uh, killing of right. uh, Muhammad's uh, descendants. So, but, but, but as well, um, the theology of the two branches actually broke away quite sharply yeah. because so much of the theology is based on what is called the Sunnah, the record of what Muhammad said and did. Um, and they each have their own version of this. And so the legal basis gets gets skewed and turned in different ways. So is, is this like different translations of the Bible, or is this different? Oh, it's stronger than that. Or, so it's like it's, uh, different more Jewish of, views on... Think uh, about Protestantism. And Catholicism. Uh, Catholicism. Remember that whole division right. still continues today? Right. So we can uh, still today a, a, a Baptist can sit down with a Catholic priest and have tea and be fine, but on the on the high level, it's still not right. right. So you have authority structure, correct, and you mm -hmm. have uh, some faith issues, yes, and doctrinal issues, correct. and issues of how martyrdom is framed, which is, I mean, that became stronger in among Sunni Muslims as well. But uh, there's so much of Shia theology that gets framed around, around martyrdom, around particularly the martyrdom of Hussein, uh, Muhammad's grandson. So during, during this the festival of the first ten days of the month of Muharram, what's called Ashura. So they will they will beat themselves, cut themselves in remembrance of Hussein. I had a Shia priest tell me, um, he was he was an Ismaili from a different, from a breakaway group. But I had a Shia priest tell me, Hussein died for our sins, mm -hmm. um, which was, which stunned me because, now I don't think necessarily in the same sense that we would have recognized that with Yeshua, but, but there was something about like, he did this for us and because of us. Okay. Yeah. Now, one more fundamental, this is great. One more fundamental question. Okay. What is Sharia law? <laughs> um, let me just take the beginning of that, and we can go back and forth on this. You'll take Sharia, and you'll take law. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Um, Sharia, Sharia is is so, and here's the thing: is 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 again, like so many things, it's complicated because in popular parlance, in say North American circles, when we hear Sharia, we think crazy assassination violence and sometimes that's included in that but most sharia law is about and most say what, what are called you mentioned fatwas most fatwas a fatwa is a, an opinion from a religious scholar so most fatwas are like somebody goes to a muslim priest and says okay according to this school of sharia that i follow or the one that you follow i'm uh, here's my inheritance i'm thinking to leave this much to my daughter and this much to my son, is that okay or do I have to change the percentages? And he'll issue a fatwa according to that. Most of it, it's like halakha. <laughs> a lot of it is just based on really mundane, boring things. Um, but when they talk about that, trying to institute Sharia law, then it comes according to, well, whose version of Sharia law? Because that's, again, like, the Quran and Islamic law, um, Islamic jurisprudence, fiqh, has, has had 1,400 plus years of development and variety, and there's a stream of it that's very extremist. We, we, we see this in, in, among the, in Afghanistan, among the Taliban, for example. So a simple question, yeah. now that you bring up the Taliban. So we understand the Taliban took over a country. Uh -huh. Okay, so Hamas is a political party that took over an area, Gaza. And uh, so my question is, did Hamas initiate sh Sharia law in Gaza? And if so, what, what, what does that mean? Mm. Does that mean women have to dress a certain way? Some people can go get professional jobs. Some people can go to school. I mean, some people can't go to school. I mean, what, what does it mean? It depends on, again, uh, Sharia law, we added the word law right. 
for English purposes, but Sharia is law. Right. It's Sharia. It's like Chai tea. Yeah. So it's from Sharia. So if I'm reading Urdu or Arabic Bible, I will read Mosaic law in English. That will be Mosaic Sharia. Sharia. Sharia, Sharia right? It is law. So that's where the Sharia. Got it. So if you have, uh, depending on what uh, denomination you're coming from, within, within Sunni, you again have... Uh, I don't know, I'm just going to throw a number there. Some 130 odd uh, denominations or mm -hmm. more. There's many more. Mm -hmm. So they call, that. I know for a fact there are 139 sects of Islam, mm -hmm. but there are so many other denominations. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to denomination, each one's going to interpret the law, Sharia, according to their needs, the way they see it. Therefore, they're going to implement it differently. So when you look at Iran, so I'm going to come back to your Hamas argument. Mm. Iran is completely a Sharia-based yes. Sharia uh, community, which is completely different from Saudis. Saudis are also run under a Sharia. They have Sunni Sharia. They have Shia Sharia. Yeah. And But at the same time, when you go to Iran, if you would go to Iran, Iran is a extremely, I've been there, I, I found Iran uh, very safe, very modern. Um, I know that I'm sitting on this uh, podcast talking about Iran, and some of our audience is is the victim of their uh, government's uh, acts yeah. uh, through Hamas. But when you meet Iranian people, mm -hmm. they're some of the sweetest people. Absolutely. They want to get out of that regime. Yes. They don't want to deal with it. There are subways. For the very first time, uh, when I came back from uh, Greece, I uh, God took me to Afghanistan, Iran, and when I saw Tehran, the way they have uh, their food, everything, I felt that I'm back in Europe. Mm. It's, the people are good, they smell nice, the streets are it's better than sometime in New York. So they have structure um, and no, things. No comment. But that's fine. <laughs> but here's what I'm trying to get you to. They have a type of Sharia there. Yeah. They do uh implement modesty and all those things but yet they have all these things it's working it's working in their society when you put it on uh, um saudis they have two mm. they have very different That's up very different. until just recently they were not allowed to drive the ladies were not allowed to drive uh, cars and they've been our allies forever right right so they have western influence but yet they are very very strict when it comes to Hamas, Hamas is neither Saudi nor Shiite. Yeah, yeah. Hamas is all about, we want a land, whoever gives the money, wherever it comes from, we will follow you. All we need is, well, we need to strike back. We want uh, um, domination over Israel, Jews, even to a point that it brings other parties and it creates trouble for other parties, yes. uh, whether Sunnis or Shiites. They create problem in all over the region, and therefore, if tomorrow, let's say, for just for the sake of this argument, they create their government, I do not believe they will implement uh, a Sharia law. I the reason why I, I think that's not possible because uh, uh, they do not know what they want, and within that the, in in that territory, you have too many political parties. Mm -hmm. It's simply it's, it's a self-destructive mechanism you have there. Taliban are one government. They are one group. That's why they were able to kick us <laughs> even out of their land again because they are united, one group. Right. Nobody, and that's the problem with the um, Hamas. Hamas is not the only group. And that's why Hamas needs to be out of there so people can come back and try to figure out how their life is. What I see in Palestine is a one group, one specific group, Hamas, um, dictating everything and speaking for the people that they don't care and uh, they are uh, destructive and sometimes smaller group within that community see them as the answer because they are at least striking back. Frustration is being s addressed. What, what kind of Muslims are people who are in uh, the West Bank? Uh, the Palestinian Authority. What what's what's Abbas? I mean, they would be, they would be more more less like uh, Abbas would be uh, Abu Mazen would be less. Uh, he would be Sunni, but less of a fundamentalist. I mean, he's an old leftist from way back, basically. Uh, 
and 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 so syncretistic between syn- his politics and his well, his faith. and 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 like, I think like a lot of people, like a lot of people. But there, I think there's there's um, the Palestinians are interesting in that there's there's there is a strong Sunni, but more of a kind of a fundamental type of Sunni idea underlying a lot. Like you don't see, for example, in in Egypt, in Syria. Um, you have a very strong underlying stream of hint, of of uh, Sufism, of mysticism in in the Islam. You have some small group, or at least used to have some small groups of that um, among the Palestinians, but not nearly not nearly in the same way. Are Sufis violent? Can be. Can be. Um, modern Sufis tend not to be. That's the public image. Right. Is they tend to be uh, much more focused on, on, on joining with one another, uniting with God. There's sometimes a bit, depending on the groups, a bit more universalistic. Um, but even because a lot of, just like we as Jews, have reacted and responded very strongly to the events of, of 10-7, um, a lot of, even, even uh, those that are, that are Sufi, even those that are more that I interact with or observe online, that are more Su- Sufi scholars in the academic sense have uh, have become very strong supporters of of uh, Palestine and Palestinians. Uh, part of it is is an, a laying aside of what happened, ignoring what happened on ten seven, um, and then br- trying to bring it back to look look at the suffering. Of the Palestinians of today, yeah. Okay, so let me take this in. This is incredibly helpful, and I know that I'm learning a lot, and I know that everybody uh, watching uh, is is probably learning a lot because you guys know a lot. Uh, so I have a question: If I were a young person, kid growing up in Gaza, surrounded by the influences of Hamas, and maybe Hamas is keeping other influences away from me. But growing up under that, how would I feel about Israel and about Jewish people in general? And I want you to talk about Jewish people. How would I feel about Jewish people, not just about the state of Israel? Maybe they would make no difference in it. In other words, what are they being taught through Mm -hmm. folk culture? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, you know, in in a mosque, not necessarily in classical Islamic literature, sure. you know, but what was their understanding? Because most of those Hamas terrorists that slaughtered 1,200 innocent Jewish people um, were not, they were not imams. They were no. not necessarily politicians. Um, they were terrorists mm-hmm. or freedom fighters, as, as they would call themselves, you know, but underneath it all, what would... What were they learning as they were growing up about Jewish people and about Israel that would cause them to do such barbarous acts? Sure. Um, So let me give you my example that will address that, actually. So up until I was 25, uh, I was mostly in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, and uh, partially I went to uh, Greece for a Bible college for a year or so. So that was my life. First time, when at the age of 25, I arrived in Binghamton in a Bible college. Mm. I was sitting in my Bible class. I don't know which class was that. They start talking about this thing. And it was, is related to, it was related to World War II. I knew about World War II, but I did not know about this event. Mm. And I begin to wonder, what, what are you talking about? Oh, and they said, "You don't know Holocaust. You, you don't. You never heard this word. No, I never heard the word, let alone know about what it is." Wow. Yeah. N- I was by that time. I had two degrees: masters in business, masters in science, and I was doing another degree while I'm in an American degree. Um, and I never heard about that. Wow. It was completely blacked out. Completely. Yeah. Never heard anything about Jewish slaughter. Never heard anything about, yes, people talk about Nazis, they talk about Hitler, everybody knew about Hitler. Mm. It's interesting, we knew about Hitler and World War II and Nazi party, we knew that that's a bad guy, Mm. but we did not know 
that Jewish community was his victim. Hmm. He was the guy who, what he was doing. We did not know anything. Wow. All we knew was that Israel is, because day one, I opened my eyes in a, um, in a culture, in a time period. It was Zia's mm. era. And uh, Sharia was the main thing. Afghan war was going on. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, Soviet Union was there. And as I grew, still, even though those narratives are there, you have consistent support for Palestine. Every single heading yeah. is about uh, how Jews are bad, how Israel is, oh, they killed somebody again. They did this thing, that thing, and the other. And I will hear from people how bad Israel is. But because I was born and raised in a Christian home, I will hear prayers for Israel. I will hear, uh, Lord, uh, uh, your, your word says, if you bless Israel, if you bless them, you will be blessed. My mom will pray for that. So we in our house, we have a different, we had a different culture. Still, we didn't know about anything about, about World War II or what happened wow. to the Jewish people, mm. but we knew that part. Now, think about a Muslim guy. And I, I know my, all of my Muslim friends were the same way because they did not know either. They did not know what happened to Jew, Jewish community, what, how they were able to get this new land back, mm. in Israel, in 1948. They had no clue. All they knew is that they, Israel, is the perpetrator, and they're killing right. their um, Muslim brothers and sisters in Israel because they will not hear what the terrorist group are doing to Israelis. They will only hear what Israel is doing to those terrorists, and when the terrorists are named, they won't be named as uh, a terrorist. They will be like, oh, such and such name will be attached to that person. Mm. And shahadat will be attached right. to that. Martyrs, 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 martyrs heroes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Heroes. So that same concept is in, in Palestinian territory, that right there. Very much Because so. yeah. you don't hear, don't, you're never going to hear anything good. If somebody is talking something good, that person better watch out because uh, somebody going to uh, take that person out. Um, so, I will not or, be saying these things today sitting in New York and Manhattan. I can, right. but I would not have ever said anything like this in Pakistan because there they take their own Muslim uh, governors and politicians out for even talking about Israel, mm -hmm. uh, let alone, let alone uh, gaining, uh, you know, creating such support or sympathy for them. Right. I mean, I Very think eye -opening. There, yeah. there, there is, I mean, I mean, even before Hamas took over, even under even under PLO rule, even under the UN agency for the Palestinians and the schools that were run, there's a lot of indoctrination into anti-Semitic thought rife throughout that material. At the same time, there were a lot of there were a lot of uh, Palestinian people, um, and 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 I mean people from Gaza and from the West Bank. Who were who had work permits and who were coming in? This is distinct from um, Arab people in Israel itself, which is a completely different kind of an idea. Um, but you you had um, but you had uh, people you had some people who who at least came and observed and interacted with Jewish people, so they weren't just a cipher, so to speak. Um, but you but people are just are just. I mean, we've all seen the film clips. Of of interviews with children on children's TV, like, yeah, the Jews are evil. We should kill them, kind of thing, and 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 it breaks my heart. It so makes the, me it the, makes those, me upset. Those, but those it, were in Arabic. Those were in Arabic, yeah. uh, but with subtitles, helpfully. Ah. Um, but those those also, and 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 as as uh, Alphonse mentioned, like they had, um, there have been people who have sought to find ways to build bridges, and particularly those um, in Gaza under Hamas rule. Uh, there was one guy who was, who was like quietly trying to kind of build some sort of relationship, and he was reported by a journalist working on the, on the Gaza side to the Hamas authorities, and he was arrested. Because, not because he was, he, he wasn't wearing, he, he wasn't like waving the Israeli flag. He wasn't singing 
Um, he wasn't singing Hatikva quietly in his sleep at night. He was he was just talking about like finding ways, but 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 in those contexts, even moves toward what they call normalization mm. is is something that they resist. That's one of the differences with Hamas specifically is they're very upfront that we do not want, they say, they don't want a two-state solution. They want a, a, a Palestine which is completely free of Jewish presence, or if they're there at all, they're completely subjugated to them. Right. The, uh, <clears throat> how about the Arab uh, social media, Arab press? Um, are there anti-Semitic tropes that you've seen? In the Arab press or in the in the so in social media, um, have you seen that kind of thing? That's been going on. It's not new. That's it's not like new. it's yeah. been going on ever since uh, the creation of uh, at least since the fifties. That you can go that far. Even when the media was not there, cartoons were yes. drawn. Um, I think those things are uh, nasty things mm -hmm. uh, to say, but um, I think it's one of those distortion of the text. So when you look at Quran, it's, it's there. It, first of all, it's there, but it's in the end so, time. So classical Islam, i.e. the Quran, mm -hmm. uh, there are, I mean, I've read the kind of statements yeah. uh, that are in the Quran, Jews are monkeys and everything else, you know? But I mean, those are well known. Yeah. I'm sure they're interpreted but, in a lot of different but ways. But that's, that's why I want to put that in the context. So the problem yeah. is when you are in a state of war, everything is fear. Right. You mm. just use propaganda. You. I just want to make sure that we understand. And if any Muslim person is hearing this, yes. hopefully this will help them to understand. The place where that verse appears in the Quran is toward the end. That is no different from Revelation. Actually, that is the text. Revelation chapter 6, toward the end, where it says, uh, and when the Antichrist comes, the chapter is about Antichrist, mm -hmm. yeah. depending on what, how you, uh, whether you're pre-tribulation or mid-tribulation. We have but enough church, to discuss no, here. We're not, we don't need to no, go we're not going to get there. But when Antichrist comes, you will see toward the end of that text, last couple of verses says, uh, and they will say, uh, to the mountains, uh, hide us, fall on us, hide us. That same exact verse is that one, right. where it starts with that, and uh, then you will say, hide us. They will hide behind the mountains, and uh, but God will, and and the, then the Antichrist will find them, and he will kill them, and they will go tell them, go get them and kill them. But right there, verse sixty in the same chapter, chapter five uh, of Quran. That's verse 60 talks about this idea that th their punishment will, would, would be that their face will be distorted right. to monkey and pigs. But that does not mean that's what happened. They, it's an illustration of, of um, wickedness. Yeah, it's that right. you are so nasty that you look like pigs. It's a metaphor. So, it's a metaphor. So, but, but underneath, they, as, as one of my uh, professors in Bible college once said, I was a new believer, and I mm -hmm. and we were reading, we were studying the Book of Revelation, which was, you know, I was too young a believer, I think, to even do that. But but we were studying the Book of Revelation, and I said, you don't literally believe in eternal flames, and, mm -hmm. and you know, and he said, well, it 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 could very well could be, but that's Good a point. but that's about the worst thing that John could describe, right? <laughs> so Good in other point. words, under underlying it right. was. Jews will be yeah that I got your Jews point. Jews will right. be judged yeah right. So that's exactly so what it is, it. and yeah. what the what the extremists did or Islamists did, which is that's why you have yes. a political Islam. They use that narrative and turn into their favor right. to distort uh, uh, innocent minds. Yes, I'm um, talking with young children when you're raising them with that kind of idea, and there is a. Um, religious obligation to hate pigs and not touch it's unclean and then you make that reference for people group that's connects there so you are right on both ends in reality it is being used on a wide scale right. by many countries almost uh, all the arab countries with through their social media platforms and uh, um, their visual presentations it, they're, they're all there's there's a similar Use of tropes. I mean, and and right. that would be, yeah. you know, I mean that would that would be true in 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 a lot of different places. Listen, we understand that um, 
not every Muslim uh, thinks about Jewish people as monkeys or whatever. Some of them have heard this and yeah. probably have a Jewish friend and don't 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 look at it that way. I'm particularly focused, mm -hmm. and I think this will be the most helpful for people at because you've set such a great context. Okay. In particular, what's on the minds of Hamas? And let me say, mm. tell you why. Mm. You brought up the, the, the Nazis. Right. And so in order, in order to br brutalize another person, right. uh, because the way Hamas slaughtered innocent Jewish people, yes. especially the peaceniks on the border mm -hmm. who were working with some of those yes. people, that's right. And who are now, they've, they've lost their idealism, unfortunately. And so the, the um, uh, Hamas was um, enraged and, and, and some people said they were on drugs. I mean, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what, they, what, what it was, but they didn't just kill 1,200 innocent right. people. They that's brutalized, right. they, they, right. they slaughtered them. That's right. And in no way am I gonna even begin describing what happened, although a lot of us no, know sure. that's some right. of the stories. Just you know? awful. And so in order to do that, yeah. you have to dehumanize somebody. That's mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Nazis did. They yes. treated the that's Jews exactly. yes. as if they were inhuman. Mm -hmm. um, how would that happen in, with an Islamic worldview? Um, uh, what would what were they learning? What what were they thinking uh, when they were motivated to do that? I, I understand the political conflict. Mm -hmm. I understand. I mean, I don't like it, obviously, but I understand sending in rockets. I understand. You know, it's mm -hmm. war is war is war. You mm -hmm. know, but the brutality of yeah. it seemed to be over the t over the top, yeah. really, and and not just. Uh, geared towards Israel mm -hmm. as a political state, but towards Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Yes. So can you explain that to us? When you look at, if you are a, even if you are a moderate Muslim and mm. you really uh, believe that mus all you know is, hey, we are suppressed. I'm talking about um, Palestinian Muslims. Mm -hmm. We are suppressed. And majority of our people are outside, whether they are in refugee camps over there yeah. in Jordan or in Egypt. So their families are around. This is our home. We're supposed to be here. Now, blame is something you can put on even uh, a person who is trying to feed you mm -hmm. uh, something. You can blame that person too. Yeah. But in this case, the blame was uh, uh, completely put on Israel mm -hmm. um, because Hamas is uh, their own people and they could have the ability to create narrative that they want to create, sure, whether yes. fear right. or with food or whatever they want to do. Uh, they're not going to, a average person will not get the list of how much money Israel gave to uh, Palestinian Authority or how much money US gave or how much money came from the Western countries as compared to any of the Islamic countries. Yes. They're not going to get that list. And when that list is published online, the, uh, the parties in that community they're going to say, oh, no, no, you see, they're making up these stories. That's Don't right. believe those stories. That's right. It's no different from, oh, there was like all the Jewish people got the notification early on yes. and they left the building, uh, Twin Towers. Uh, it's uh, all it's Jew Jews are the ones who brought that 9-11 building down. Oh, this yeah. was commonly accepted narrative in yeah. all Muslim countries. It was. And it was brought up again recently. It was again surfing when a Palestinian thing happened. Uh, everybody was just like, oh, you see, now they're attacking us. They create these things. They are the one who gave money to right. these actors to do this. Oh, so goodness. these kind of conspiracies are there. Yeah. So you got to understand that you're dealing with a um, media control territories mm -hmm. that whether fear or uh, uh, food, whatever they do, they are able to give the narrative that they want to feed to their people. Right. With that, you go to the next thing is you create a common enemy. To them, if you want to maintain your power, the only way you can keep your support um, uh, for yourself is mm -hmm. by creating an enemy that you can direct all the problems to That's them. Right. Or you don't have food because Which of that enemy. Yeah. Water, because of them. Sanitary, because of them. Everything, because of them. 
we are the good guys, they are the bad guys. Right. And on the back end, I'm going to keep receiving money to give them $5 for you and 500 for me. They don't Ooh, know that I right. got the 500 So you constantly do this enough times that's right. that over the period of time, you're going to have second generation, third generation. By that time, nobody's going to question. Yeah. And if ever anybody questioned, that person will be out. That's right. So hatred is a, in, it's, it's deeper than indoctrination. So it's so deep, it's going to take, uh, I often think it takes few generations before you can cleanse a person of all of that. It's uh, even if we start that today. I, I pray that Hamas uh, get, uh, you know, Israel succeed and uh, uh, we stand strong mm -hmm. uh, as Americans with them and yeah. they succeed in their endeavor and Hamas is out of there. I believe that Palestinians even do not realize how um, good it's going to be for them they can build a beautiful um, place for themselves if those elements are out of there. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I just, while you were talking, I pulled this one news. My yeah. first introduction to brutality was uh, Daniel Pearl. I'm sure oh, you yes. remember him. He came to Karachi, was investigating a crime. It was before my exposure to uh, the West. Mm. Uh, never left Pakistan before that. It was 2000, February 2002. That's what I was doing, looking mm. for when did he come? And I saw this, uh, his his body, his they were holding his head yeah. um, in their hand and it was the main heading. And I was very young and uh, um, my classmate, Muslims, when they saw that, Almost everyone was on the in, in tears. Why would they do that? I just want to mm. bring that element too. Thank you. That you have yeah. a large Muslim population when they see those kind of acts, they're like, why would you do that? I yeah. guess I guess a lot of it is based on the internal doctor, indoctrination. Right. And again, uh, by context, unfortunately, we have to wrap it up. Oh. So, uh, so I have a, uh, as always, one has a final question. <sighs> and... Yes. Uh, but, and it is always, you have to answer it in like 90 seconds. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so the final question is a very, very, very easy question because we've been dealing with very hard topics. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, how do you envision uh, the possibility of peace between Israel and Gaza? How will it happen? When will it happen? What will it take to happen? That should be easy. Wow. Um, yeah. Thanks for an easy question like that. Um, <laughs> I think, I think once Hamas is gone, and I think that really has to be part of that, once Hamas is gone, I think there, there can be some sort of rebuilding. But I think, but even with regard to the Palestinian Authority, there needs to be some sort of a way to build trust away from the, even the recent past, the whole pay to slay thing has still been just corrupt. and um, But what I'm reminded, I'll, I'll say this, I'm reminded of one thing, which is in, in uh, after World War II in Germany, um, the Germans needed to be unindoctrinated. There was a, a movie called The Labyrinth of Lies. Um, it was a German movie about how so many Nazi officials were still kind of floating around and in circulation in Germany in the 50s. And one prosecutor began to uncover what really happened. And he wasn't aware of the extent of the Holocaust. And they began to, to, to uncover this. And they began to go after these officials who were still floating around, who had, been not, who had not been prosecuted by the international prosecution. They began going after them from the German side. And I wonder if at some point something like that it's would need to be part of the picture, some kind um, of uh, Gaza as well purge, maybe. For me, the as a pastor and a believer in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. I think the solution of peace it will not come until Jesus comes. So that's hmm. that's uh, literal Jesus coming back, but also figuratively, or the gospel needs to penetrate that mm -hmm. region. Um, I really believe that. May it be um, and I think uh, I have seen the proof of that when I sit down, I see a Muslim and a 
messianic jewish person Ooh, yes. coming together in jesus yes. having dinner and having real not political conversation mm. real heart to heart relationship i really that's believe good. that 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 is possible by the power of the gospel okay. so to me that's the solution uh, on political land i think every politician um has their own reason every organization got their own agenda um i think first they want to build their organization their rule yeah. uh in the middle of that you always going to have suffering people nobody listening to yeah. and i think that's where the gospel shines gospel look for the uh, little guy a gospel brings hope gospel takes care of all of them Praise even God. it can convict the heart of the mighty one uh who is the oppressor it can change the i have the beautiful example in the scriptures i'm pointing to this because i read from here <laughs> there's a guy by the name uh, Saul in the bible mm. and you guys are aware of this guy he was going around sounds familiar uh, killing uh, fellow jewish people uh for one reason because they didn't fit his agenda or his brand of sharia mm. and uh when Saul's heart turned to Jesus he became Paul and Paul became a martyr mm. who became a persecuted one rather than the persecutor i think that can happen in our lifetime if the gospel is allowed to get there i've seen it yeah, yeah. i've seen it happen let yeah. me uh thank you both very thank much you. for this i know that um that this you're passionate about this yes. and you're passionate for the salvation of Uh, all people but yes. especially for uh those who are muslims mm -hmm. and uh, we all believe yeah. i think strongly that the only answer the only hope for peace is the prince of peace but let me tell you what isaiah said mm. about what's going to happen uh when all of this takes place so isaiah 19 verse 23 mm. in that day there'll be a highway from egypt to assyria amen and that includes the whole area that's right and the assyrians will come into egypt and the egyptians into assyria mm. and the egyptians will worship with the assyrians and in that day israel will be the third part with yes. egypt and assyria that's right a blessing in the midst of the earth whom the lord of hosts has blessed mm. saying blessed is egypt my people assyria the work of my hands and israel my nakhla my yes. my inheritance masha'allah it because it is god's will <laughs> and that is uh, what we're looking forward to listen friends if you've got more questions uh, you can leave your questions uh after you've seen this uh podcast and i i can't promise we'll uh, we'll answer every single one of them but who knows maybe these brothers would be willing to answer a few key questions that you might ask so you can get in touch with chosen people chosenpeople.com and uh, we'll 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 do our best to help you. I hope that this has given you some deeper understanding as we all try and figure out what really happened on October 7th. And what we were trying to do is to get behind the scenes, get behind the mindset, behind uh the world view, behind the hearts uh to get into depth as to what was underlying that caused people to be behave in that way. Very complicated and when we have these levels of complication then it drives us to our knees and so we need to pray for the peace of jerusalem yes uh they will prosper who love the pray for uh peace among particularly for the hostages pray yes. that they will be delivered and yes. and, uh, and also pray for the innocent palestinians mm -hmm. who are suffering as well yes. uh no one wins in this war and uh we pray that it might lead many to seek the real truth that's, that's only right. found in Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus the Messiah so thank you brothers god thank bless you. you thank you thank you thank you for listening and watching